Hi, welcome to Math as a Language. In this uh, video, we're going to pick up where we left off in an earlier video where we were, where we were discussing the topic of uh, functions, if you will. And uh, today's topic has to do with how we, how we go about representing functions. Uh, as a review, as you will recall, we said that a function uh, is such that for every input element, uh, there is exactly one output. And uh, we use the, uh, the example of a copier uh, to, to demonstrate that point. And uh, we had our input elements listed in uh, one uh, circle here. We had our input as a matter of review. And, uh, and then we had, uh, they were paired with their output elements. Okay, so the output is here. And uh, as we uh, indicated with uh, in the last video or earlier videos that the, with a copier more often than not, uh, whatever value you indicate as, as in in terms of wanting a number, the number of copies, that number of copies is usually generated uh, as the output value. So if you want three copies, you expect to get three copies. If you want uh, f uh, four copies, then uh, we expect four copies to be generated. And finally, we talked about the fact that we have a problem. However, if you want, if you push the button for two copies, and in one instance you get five copies, or in the second instance, you may get nothing at all. You may not get any copies at all. And this became the problem where we had the request for two, the input was two, and we got two different output values for that same input. So that's what we're talking about. The fact that when we say that the rule for a function is that for every input, there is exactly one output. And in this particular case, we cannot have two different output elements for this for the two. OK? Now, we, we talked about this being a, uh, the, the, the the fact that behind every function there is a rule, okay. So, uh, so know that the rule is very important. Now, we in some instances, uh, well, uh, we may know the rule, we may not. In terms of a copier, generally speaking, uh, what you request is what you want. But to be quite frank with you, most of the things that that we that that functions and that we work with in life, we really don't know what the rule, and we may not know how they work. Whether when you flip the switch, of course, the light comes on. We know that because we know what the output we want. When we turn the key in the car, we know that we want the car to start. But generally, uh, for the most part, if something goes wrong with the car, all we know is that uh, we 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 don't know perhaps the rule and how to fix it. So. Please recognize that knowing the rule or not knowing the rule is not mandatory for it uh, for for it being a function. But recognizing that we we should know what to expect is part of uh, is part of the condition. Uh, and to make that point, what we what we're going to do here is take a look at two different two now another mapping diagram. Let's take a look at this one just to just to uh, to make the point. We have uh, our input elements here, and we're going to put our output elements here. All right. And let's just say that in the input values, we're going to have a 4, a 6, and a 9. And the output, we're going to put as the output elements, a 2, a 6, and a 7. Now, we don't know why the 2, the 4 becomes a 2. But in this particular case, what we are suggesting that the 4 does become a 2, and that's how it's paired. We call these pairings. And the 6 ended up being a 6. Uh, the the uh, 6 is also paired with 6 and that pairing exists and the 9 is paired with 7. So in this case uh, we would be hard pressed and, and we're not even going to bother trying to figure out what the rule is, what's going on between this input and output. But know that the imp important thing that, that we're as far as we're concerned is it or is it not a function and in this particular case we have no reason to believe it's not a function. So in this case we'd say yes it is a function because in, in fact every input is generating a unique and different output element. All right. Now this is always a, 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 a an area where students get a little confused. So we're going to go ahead and and make this one last example, and we will uh, probably stop at this point and take a look at other ways of representing functions in the future. But let's go ahead and do this one last example in order to make this point because this is where students sometimes get a little bit confused. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with three different input elements: a four, a nine. Well, we've been four and nine's enough. Let's go with some different values. Let's go with a uh, a five, eight, and seven. Five, eight, and seven. All right. And our output elements are two, nine, and one. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to pair the five with a two, 
we're going to pair the 8 with the 2 and we're going to pair the 7 with a 1. Now the question becomes is this or is this not a function? Again we don't know what the rule is, we don't know what's going on, why the 5 became a 2 or the 8 became a 2, but both of these elements, both of these input values became this, uh, generate the same output. So believe it or not, this is still a function. The answer here is yes, it's still a function. The question is, do we know what to expect from a 5? Yes, 2. Do we know what to expect from the 8? It happens to be the same 2, and the 7 gave us a 1. So whether or not, again to review, whether or not we know the rule or not know the rule is not the issue. The issue is the pairing and how, well, how does the output element relates to the input element. And we're going to finish with one last example and just to make the point home, let's make our input values here and our output values are here. And in this particular case we're going to have uh, 1, negative 3, and 7. All right, 7. And we're going to have a 5. Again, we're going to have 1 give us 5, 3, negative 3 gives us 5, and 7 also gives us 5. Again, all three input values, all three of the input elements, are giving you the same output element. All right, so the question is, is the function? And again, the answer is yes. This is a fine function. In fact, it's a constant function. Everything is giving us the same value for whatever reason, and that would be fine. Okay? All right, one last point of terminology, and then we'll go from there, and we'll, we'll probably pick up this topic in a future video. These input elements here, the input, when we get more into functions as we go along, the input elements are sometimes referred to as the domain values. Okay, the domain values. And the output values, the output elements, output values are referred to as the range when you're talking about a function. Okay, and there we have it. All right. Okay, we're going to stop at this point and make it a nice little brief lesson. And again, this is these are referred to as mapping diagrams, uh, and uh, and they're quite popular in terms of representing functions. And again, the distinction that we must make real quickly is this is the one that is not a function. This is the one that does not work. We cannot have the, the one input value giving us two different output values. That is not a function. However, it is quite okay. It looks quite okay. This is quite fine. This is yes. In fact, we can have all three of the input values giving us the same output value. That would be a function. Okay. And again, finally, we're going to pick up on this. Uh, in future videos, the input values are referred to as the domain and the output values are referred to as the range. All right. Okay. Thanks for visiting and we look forward to seeing you in a future video. Take care.